I remember the first day I ran one kilometer and it was like in maybe 12 minutes and I felt like I was going to die. It was my whole body. <laughs> My body was scratching me. You know that initial when you start. Oh, running, you know that yes, thing? yes. My body was exactly. Itchy. You know, I felt like my chest was bursting. It was uh, terrible. Mm -hmm. I told myself I'm not going to do this again. Hello, guys. Dr. CY, the running dog, is here again. And today I am really excited. Excited because today I have a very special guest. You know, she's really someone to reckon with. A multitasker by excellence. She's a full time cardiologist in Canada an assistant professor, a wife, a mother, and upon all that, a very avid runner. So let's welcome Dr. Sandy Ofori. Dr. Sandy, I have to welcome you to my channel. I'm sure my viewers will be excited to hear from you today. So we've been following each other for like how long now? Two years? Two, or two years or so, yeah. And I've been really impressed by your ethics, both professionally and uh, socially, and especially when it comes to running. You are actually my first guest on this channel, and now you just did your own marathon. 42 for 42, that is just perfect. Yes, that was, <laughs> that was the motivation. <laughs> I invited you to the channel today for my viewers, you know, because I know that a lot of people who follow me and those who watch my these things are interested in keeping yeah. healthy, you know, running. I think we are going to really gain a lot from you today. As a cardiologist, an assistant professor, a mom, a wife, and a runner. So very many hats. It's really, it's really amazing. So I really thank you for accepting my invitation and welcome to the channel. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. Today, we'll be picking her brain for some pretty important and valuable stuff. We will be discussing so many issues bordering on health and fitness, focusing particularly on running and how it affects our general well-being, our heart, general cardiovascular health. Do better to discuss issues of the heart than a heart doctor myself. So let's dive right into it. As a cardiologist, what benefits do we expect from running to our heart, blood vessels? Oh, for sure. So running is one of the best forms of aerobic activity. And we have lots of evidence showing that the more aerobic activity you do, the better it is for your heart in terms of improving blood flow to the heart itself, keeping your heart young, right? Because you have, we have this thing called heart age. So you yeah. might look young on the outside, but your heart is the age of an 80-year-old and vice versa. So in keeping your heart young, you want to exercise the heart because the heart is a muscle, right? Yeah. And the simplest way to think about it is you can have a very soft, weak muscle, but start going to the gym, start lifting weights. Within a month, you will see the difference. You will yeah. see the muscle tune up, the muscle is stronger. So your heart is a muscle. So the more you exercise, the more it's strong in the sense that it can withstand insults, right? It can withstand yeah. even ischemic damage, right? So yeah. the stronger your heart is, the less likely you are to have major heart problems. It doesn't take it away, but it just makes it less likely. So running in particular helps you to build that cardiovascular fitness. When you're running, you agree with that. You're working on your breathing as well. You're working on your movement. So it's a whole body workout. You know, you're moving everything. It's a very, very simple, easy. Anybody can do it. All you need are a pair of good shoes. That's all. Mm -hmm. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't need to drive anywhere. You don't need any membership. You don't need anything. <laughs> you can no, go to yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks for bringing up that shoe stuff. What impact does running shoes oh, have to our it, run? It makes a huge impact, number one. So as an older woman, especially for men too, but the older you are, mm. obviously you already have wear and tear of your joints, okay? Mm. And running or any other sort of regular physical activity that you're doing the same movement will definitely wear and tear your joints. So that, was, that one is for sure. So what you want to do, you want to have shoes that support your weight and your joints. So you want a shoe that is properly fitted, has good ankle support, has good arch support and has space in the front for your toe box. So the toe box should not yeah, be narrow. There's space free. for them to move. In and fact, in, in fact, anytime I run with a shoe where my toes are like this, you don't run well. The so you want the shoe that is wide mm -hmm. enough in the toolbox to allow your toes freedom of movement. Because imagine if you're like toes are like this, you're running like this. You're just basically cramping your to your leg the whole way. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid that. So basically the kind of shoe you're wearing really makes a big difference. <laughs> the only thing that is expensive in running is the shoe that you wear because you don't compromise on the shoes. You want to make sure you're wearing the right shoes. Obviously, when it comes to brand or anything, everybody will be different. Everybody has different. Yeah. yeah so the best yeah. thing is go to a shop try on different shoes even if you're buying online make sure you have the option to return so that you can try on the shoe and then if it fits you then that's okay there are some models that will not work for your feet at all definitely so not definitely. because everybody's wearing it i have a yeah. lot of that thank you for bringing that up what inspired you to start running 
Mm. I used to just run once in a while, casually. There was a group I was in when I was in Port Harcourt. It's called Trooper. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah. So it's a running group. They used to organize like weekend runs or some social events mm. around running. So that was kind of, let me say, the entrance. But mm. it was a group run. It was more social than anything else. But <laughs> And then my sister is an avid runner, right? The one yeah. that did marathon with you? Yes. Mm. I didn't love running at the beginning because... It used to take me so long to even finish a kilometer. I was like, oh, kilometer is so far. One would like finish one kilometer. <laughs> one kilometer. <laughs> I remember the first day I ran one kilometer and it was like in maybe 12 minutes and I felt like I was going to die. It was my whole body. <laughs> My body was scratching me. You know that initial when you start. Oh, you know that? Yes, yes. My body was exactly. Itching. You know, I felt like my chest was busting. It was uh, terrible. Mm. I told myself I'm not going to do this again. My sister said. My sister said, you know, we'll just keep running, just keep running. And then from there, I ran one kilometer in like ten minutes. I was like, oh, okay, so I can run in less than ten minutes. Uh, I started setting small goals. I think my first major goal I set was to run five k uh, as a stretch without stopping. Mm. But I was running five k in like maybe. That's the eight minutes or 40 minutes, whatever. And then I said to set the goal to run a 5k in 30 minutes, you know. Yeah. So, you know, when you break every barrier, you want the next one, you want the next Definitely. one. Yeah. Until I got to the point where I'm, you know, my barrier was to break the 25 minutes for the 5k. And mm. I did that. And then, you know, now mm. the rest you know, is just... just keep, the goalpost keeps shifting. <laughs> there's, no finish, there's no finish line. So you just keep shifting the goalpost. Thanks. Nice. I know you have a lot of things on your plate every day. So, as a busy cardiologist, an assistant professor, a wife, mother, how do you manage to squeeze time to make out or you run like three, four times a week? How do you make yeah, out? So, to do I, well, so let me throw the question back at you. How do you make out time to browse on your phone? How do you make out time to discuss Nigerian politics? How do you make out time to do anything? People prioritize what is important to them. Yeah. So whatever is important to you, you will make time for. So when people tell me, because obviously, even in my line of work, obviously, every day I'm telling people, yes, you should exercise. And mm -hmm. the commonest thing I hear is I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's not enough time in the day. But guess what? The one hour you spend watching TV or pressing your phone or something, you can use that time to exercise. And it doesn't have to be running. You can, you can, if you're walking, you can be on your phone with your family. You can be on your phone praising God or praying while you're walking. You can mix it up. So my point is, if it's important to you, you will create time for it. For me, my physical health is important to me because no matter how hard I work, I have to be healthy in order to work well. I have to be healthy in order to be a good mom. I have to be healthy in order to, like, in order to live my life, I need to be healthy. And how am I healthy? Is by watching what I eat and exercising. The rest is up to God. Definitely. Right? So for me, exercising is like I'm breathing, I'm eating, I'm exercising. It's just part of life. So you create that time. And it doesn't have to be more than one hour. Inside the 24 hours of the day, you sleep six or seven or eight, exercise one, and you leave the rest. Any work that you cannot get done in eight hours, my brother, I cannot get done. <laughs> <laughs> what cannot be the reason why you're not exercising? <laughs> if you're if you need to spend time with your family, get them with you outside. Spend time with them outside. All of you should exercise then. You can spend time together. There's always a way if there's a will. The main thing is, is there a will? Don't forget, it doesn't have to be running. You can exercise inside your house. If yeah. it's important, you prioritize it. That's the truth. Nobody is too busy to be alive. Definitely. That is quite impressive. What do you think are some of the misconceptions about running? And how will you address them? I'll tell you the number one one in my own opinion. People that feel that if you're not running fast, then you're not a real runner. Okay. I can tell you many times I've had people who say, oh, running is not for me. I'm a back of the pack runner. Mm. Or say if you're running in a group, mm. people that are slower may feel left out or feel not appreciated or feel a little bit intimidated. That, that one has made people stop running. I know people who have stopped running because they say, oh, they're too slow. They can't catch up, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're slow relative to somebody who's fast. But relative to somebody who's on the couch, <laughs> you are speeding. <laughs> so it's all relative. And unlike many other sports, running is really about self-improvement. I look at myself and I'm like, if I can run 5K in 25 minutes, to me, that is winning. For some people, that's a very slow jog. I have a friend, a colleague of mine, whose goal for the marathon was to run it in less than three hours. Mm. My goal was to finish. So yeah. my point is that there's always going to be people that are one thing or the other. Is, is run your own race. So one of the biggest misconceptions is that you have to be a fast runner to be actually a real runner. No. 
Even if you go out there and you do chocolate, call, chocolate, call, chocolate, call, as long as you're running, you're a runner. That's for me, that's the biggest misconception. But there are other misconceptions, including things like running will make your joints degenerate faster. Yes. Or as a woman, you shouldn't run too much. You will dry up, all mm. kinds of things. Mm. And that's not true because, yes, any sport that involves repetitive motion can theoretically affect your joints. But if you run with proper form, if you mix up your running with strength training and if you fuel your body well, then you overcome a lot of that. And don't forget that even if your joints are degenerating per se, if your muscles that are supporting the joints are healthy, if your ligaments are healthy, then it has less, less of an impact on you. Because if you don't run or exercise, your joints will still degenerate. But now you have weak muscles that can't support the joints. So you mm. have more pain, you have more mobility issues with that. I know many runners who have osteoarthritis of their knee, but they are still able to walk and do things because they are strong overall, right? So while they are waiting for their surgery or replacement, they are actually still being physically active. On the other hand, I know a lot of sedentary people who have joint problems and literally can't walk because they have so much pain. And why do you have so much pain? It's because you don't have any muscle strength to support the joint when you're walking. So everything's on the joint. So that's a misconception that running will make your joints age faster. Everybody's joints will age as you're going, but it's running yes. overall yes. makes yes. you healthy and strong so that when your joints are generating, you're still healthy and strong and you have less mobility from that. Taking care of the muscles that support yeah. the joints is a very big yeah. issue. Yeah. So that misconception that running will wash out your knees, I think that's what it is, a misconception. Yeah. It actually yeah. does help. And uh, I hear some people also mention that it also helps with back pain. I don't know. <laughs> I've had back pain. After having my kids, I used to have pretty severe back, back pain. But exercising helps. Not, not just running. Like even, you know, that's why I said you mix it up, right? So that you, because you want to always think about the joint and think about the muscles around the joint, right? So like for back pain, you need to have a strong core. Think about why do we give people that have back pain braces? You're giving them a brace. Yeah, for stretching it. Good. Yeah. So use your own muscles to act as the brace. Mm. Then you have that double benefit, right? You have the brace support and then you have strength, strength in your muscles. So mm. it's just thinking about the joint and the muscles around the joint because we keep forgetting that joints are not just bones. It's bones, it's cartilage, it's tendons, it's muscle. It's a yeah. whole unit. So if you only worry about between the bones, then you're not being holistic in your yeah. approach. Another misconception is like to make you dry up, blah, blah. I'm like, mm. really? No. Because when you're running, you're eating well. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very conscious about what you're eating, right? Yeah. So you're, mm. there's a correlation between exercising and healthy eating. Because most people that exercise tend to eat healthy as well. So yeah, that argument doesn't really um, hold mm. water. Mm. Um, plus, I always tell myself, if you're going to eat unhealthy, you're going to eat unhealthy. So better at least, at least be exercising to get some better. <laughs> Because, yeah, because it's yeah, good point, all yeah. around us, right? Because at least you avoid double wahala. At least avoid exactly. At least avoid double wahala. <laughs> healthy eating is a very it's one of the it's one of the most difficult things to do in the sense that we are surrounded by unhealthy foods all the time. Yeah. So for you to eat healthy, you have to make a good conscious effort. Conscious you have to effort. prepare your meals. You have to go to work with your meals. Yeah, like the things that you have to do in order to eat. And don't forget that healthy food is expensive. Yeah, it's cheaper to buy McDonald's burger than to go and buy vegetables and come home and make food for sure. And besides, no matter how consciously you're trying, you can go to a friend's birthday party and there's cake, and there's small chops. Like, you socialize. And for us, socializing is food many times. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that no matter how you try, you're going to sometimes not eat as healthy as you want. But one thing that's always under your control is your exercising. So control that 100% so that if on in the other, you other, other hand, the side. Mm -hmm. a little bit, you're not, you know, have you know the balance, you have an overall sort of healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. This has been really a, an interesting chat. We all have days or weeks when we feel like just calling up and giving it a rest. Oh, yeah. What keeps you motivated? It's a habit. Habit. Of course, there, there, there's times when you don't feel like doing anything. There's times when maybe you travel, like, you know, things will happen. But because it becomes a habit, somehow you find yourself needing the run even. Like for me, when I go to a new city now, my brain is wired. Oh, I have to explore this city. I use that as a way to explore a new place. If I go to a new place, I make sure I have my running shoes. And I get on my, on. I just get on the road because I'm like, you know what? I have my phone. Worst case scenario, if I get lost, I'll find an Uber and get back to my hotel. But... 
<laughs> instead of getting in the car or going on the tour, just use your your legs and tour around Explore. the place. So, mm. Yeah. So my point is, what keeps you going is the habit that you form. Any behavior you take up and consistently do becomes a habit. If you make running a habit, then unconsciously, even when you don't feel like it, your body will not rest until you have done it. You can run five minutes. You can run 10 minutes. Nobody says every run must be two hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. What have been your most memorable running experience? The yeah. ones that will come to mind will be when I took up trail running because it was a completely yeah. different ball game for me it's not something i was used to at all and unlike when you're running on the road it's a straight road it's flat whatever it is you're seeing where you're going yeah i can actually tune off i can just like it's a simple straightforward thing on the trail it's a completely different beast because number one it is like this mm-hmm. it is uneven there's rocks there's roots and you have up- to be alert every minute all your senses have to be that's like, 100 percent alert otherwise you will enjoy <laughs> yourself. i remember the very first one i went on it was so scary because it was an uphill and people were running up the hill and i was i'd never done that before i've never run up a muddy hill before mm. you know so i was slipping sliding at the point i had to even go on like use my hands and legs you know it was funny of course people were laughing not not that like they were laughing at me but it was a funny thing for me those are the memorable ones the ones i run on very interesting so how long have you been running if you want to say running more consistently since 2017 wow that's yeah like six years like six years now yeah and when i say running more constantly what i mean is like making an international effort to run three or four times a week or like before when you know i could stay like when you run when you feel like it or when some people say let's go exactly when it has become a lifestyle from 2017 yeah are you involved in any other form of physical exercise? Yeah, aerobics generally at home to be two times a week. Okay, you are going to the gym now. Going to the gym, oh, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. You know, weight training is also an important complement to running. Yeah, especially the older you get. Once you're above 40, you really need to build your strength. Definitely. Not just running. Running is fine, but you need to build your, you know. Yeah, it's good to mix it up so yeah. that you you confuse your cardiovascular system so that it doesn't adapt too much to one form of activity so mixing it up mixing it up is really good okay you know there are so many people who like when you post on social media 15 kilometers they say oh i wish i can run like this what advice do you have for people who are interested in running but they just don't know how to start my only advice is stop wishing just go and buy shoes if you can walk you can run Every sport needs a coach, but this is one sport where you can start without any nothing. There's lots of free resources online. Just Google running form. Mm. Just how to run. There's no formality. Just stop wishing and just stop start running. And start doing. <laughs> just start doing. If you keep wishing, you will never get it done. Get an app. Get that Couch to 5K app. It's free and it's really helpful. You download mm. it. It's called Couch to 5K. Mm. It takes you literally from couch to 5K. The way the app is designed is so nice because it's a gradual build. Up. by the time you're finished the program mm. you realize that wow i've run five kilometers when i first did my first 10k here that also took me around an hour and 38 minutes and i was so okay. upset i remain consistent right now four years older but i'm doing it sub 15 minutes 10 kilometers yeah. so what i'm saying is what facing what you just said start doing nobody was born knowing how to do anything the more you do it the better you get at it exactly because there's no amount of planning or preparation that gets you to do that imperfectly until yep. you start doing it another thing i say is you're not it's not something you're going to you're looking at doing for three months or no. one year it's something you're, you're incorporating into your life i want to see myself running right. up to um, 18, just, like you just like you are talking about the heart age that is a very important thing that i'm also taking out today there are people who are 40 years old but their hearts are 60 years yeah. old. there are people who are 70 years old but their hearts are like 30 40 years old. exactly exactly you know? uh, so you so, want to be reversing your heart age as you're getting older yeah let's talk about your marathon journey you know because yeah. uh, I, I was following you in the group actually i wasn't really suspecting that you were planning on running the marathon because i, I, I wasn't that, training but i just noticed that you were doing long runs more consistently yeah. What happened was, I've been playing around with the idea of running a marathon, blah, blah. The main reason why I haven't run marathon since is because I, I failed to see the point. I didn't see the point. Like, what's the point of running that long? Because for me, running is just exercise. And once I can do my 45 minutes of that exercise, it's done. But obviously, you, when you have a goal, it just stays in your mind. 
I was supposed to run this marathon when I turned 40, it didn't work. I actually started following the plan last year, but something happened and it fell through. And then this year, I said, okay, I'm going to sign up for a marathon. I actually tried to get into the London marathon, but I didn't get into the London marathon. I was like, before traveling for my first marathon, let me run the one that is near my house first. (laughs) So, So... I just, it was it was like a, on a whim, I think maybe something like nine weeks before the marathon. I just said, you know what, if I don't do this thing this year, I'm turning 42, I never, I will never do it. Mm. But, and good enough, the marathon is in May, my birthday is in May. So I was like, well, uh, this is the YouTube. Okay. Mm. So I signed up for the marathon. Then obviously I needed moral support. So I told my sister to sign up as well. So mm. even though she did not plan to, I mean, she had a baby in December. So marathon mm. running was not in her plan, but I told her, don't worry, we'll just run it anyway. So I signed up. So once I signed up, I then knew that I had to pair. So the Nike Run Club app mm. has a free marathon training plan. But with work and everything I'm doing, I couldn't meet up all the runs. Obviously, during the week, I'm out of the house quickly. I'm back home late. I'm tired. So if I can run my 5K a day, I'm okay. The only time I had time was at the weekend. So I was like, you know what? If nothing else, let me just run long at the weekend. What was the longest went... distance you ran before the marathon? 32 kilometers. Okay. So <laughs> because I ran 32 kilometers two weeks before the marathon, the idea was now i know i can run 32 so i'll run 32 and then if i have to walk the remaining 10 then it's fine <laughs> so i will but still finish, finish time was, uh, 4 23, it was 4 right? 40, 4 43 how did you feel on the road you oh, felt good go, like i didn't my goal was to finish the run so god that i had no pressure so on the thursday before the run i ran 10 miles just to make sure that the legs were working friday i didn't run saturday i didn't run i was just relaxing i was eating and then on Sunday, which was the day of the run, something I don't normally do, but I, I knew that I needed to do was to have, I had all these energy gels. I know that when you're running long, you want to fuel before you bunk. Okay. So my goal was every 45 minutes, I'll take a bite of my energy bar. So you, the energy bar is literally just, is literally a glucose bar, really. So in the morning before going to run, I had my normal pre-run meal, which is a slice of toast, peanut butter, and banana. <laughs> So the first 10K was fine. It was normal. First so, but I took, fine yeah. for you. <laughs> well, okay. First, okay, the first 10K was okay. So but by, by 45 minutes, I was, I was around maybe 8K. So I ate some of my energy bar and I continued. So I was doing every 45 minutes, I take a bite. Every 45 minutes, I take a bite. Up to the first half marathon, actually, from the fir- first 21K, I would say it was fine. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. We're running steady pace. Then 21 to 30K, I was feeling good. So I increased my pace a little bit. Okay. So I, so I ran to 30K. So basically from the beginning to 30K, I felt good. And I was feeling, I was drinking water. I was just staying on, on track. Everything was going well. Then at 32K, I started having pain under my feet. Like, mm. you know, when you're running and you're as if your foot feels like you're stepping on glass or something. I started having pains. I wasn't sure oh, if it was, my, okay. it was my planter. I wasn't sure what it was. Mm. But I just told myself, see, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to get injured. So if I have to slow down, whatever I have to do, just do. Mm. But by 35K, oh my Stopped. God. It's Which kind of which can stop 35k to 40k was, all i was just seeing was pain 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 every oh the whole body was pain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i was like who said me this don't one? get me scared because me i'm planning to do my own marathon no it was it was it was so pain like i can't explain it to you like my every step i took was so painful between 35 and 40k but mm. i at that point i was like i'm finishing this race because yeah, i'm going too far to i can also about 37k you know what i mean so i just ran through it and then miraculously by when i also but then i saw the 40k mm. sign in fact it disappeared. I think the whole pain just melted away i think the I, idea that i was now getting to I the think end it, i think it's adrenaline you know as I, you think, are, I think so because the end. Yeah. at 40k i started feeling good my music was i got like the music yeah. the, you know i had a playlist so by that 40k yeah. mm. the way i arranged the playlist was towards the end for like nigerian then, banging <laughs> that. so by that 40k the music was working the body was feeling good <laughs> And I actually ran the last two k, like actually, actually running the last two k. Mm. So I actually got into the finish line at a very reasonable. You ran together with your sister throughout. Yes, I ran with her to like thirty five k. She finished mm. like maybe six minutes or so behind me. Oh, okay, uh-huh. I, I was happy. And when yeah, I finished, uh, apart from so many amateur guys who did marathon, you know, I'm not talking about the professionals, but for uh-huh. most amateur guys, it's actually a grueling test. But there's something you mentioned at the end. You said 
you were asking yourself like why do it but for me personally i think that a marathon is the ultimate test for a runner that is why i must do an official marathon that that's is, what you think that's, that's, that's what the, you think that's the way i think hey, about it is the marathon somebody will tell you 50 miles is the ultimate test no i'm not doing, I'm not <laughs> Sorry, doing 50k, 50K. I'm not doing people. No, not do the people. Okay, you're not even oh, no. Ultimate you miles. know. <laughs> I thank you so much for making that time to join me oh, today. Anytime. And uh, I must say that I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and a lot has really come out of here. You know, I'm more motivated to do Evil Iron Man. What to do, you know? <laughs> Thank yeah, you, you motivate us as well. You inspire us. So that's good. Thank yeah. you. It has been a, a very stimulating conversation. Good. Yeah. Final word for your viewers. Get yeah. your running shoes and go hit the pavement. <laughs>